Party started. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Randy Bird here for the uh, Birdhouse Beam team meeting. And uh, we've combined forces. I'm pretty excited about that. We've got a great group. And I think there's also a lot of value of cross you know, learning through other teams. I've got a California team with Christian, Julia Rossiter's in Reading. I've got people in LA. I've got a people guy in Hollywood. So as we get this other areas outside, I think there's going to be value, both both an input, what's happening in the market, and what's happening with buyers and everything else going on today. So what I did today is I designed a training program around social media, around Facebook specifically, that's really good tactics to use right now. And there's multi-level of opportunity with them. This is a production call, but it's also got an attraction opportunity because they really are the same thing. You're, you're commit, connecting and gaining the trust of buyers and sellers. And you're also, it naturally works well with agents as well, right? So what I want to do today is I'm going to get started with this um, presentation I have that I built for you guys that I did in Tahoe. And it's about Facebook specifically and how to get buyers and sellers from Facebook, how to have conversations and build relationship and trust through Facebook, through instant messaging, uh, Facebook, Instagram, it really works throughout even TikTok. It's all the same principle if you follow the system. Some of this you may have heard before, but I promise you, if you put this into place, you're going to see impact in your business very, very quickly. Okay. So before I get started with the presentation, any questions, anything for me that you uh, have been thinking about that I can support you on? And we'll also have this, uh, you know, towards the end, but it's going to go pretty fast. So if you have anything for me, ask. You could also type it in the chat. But again, my purpose of this is action-packed, fast, drinking from a fire hose, not a long, lazy, hour-long team meeting that you're just dreading every week, right? I want you to be like irritated if you're a minute or two late because you missed something, and then and then engaging so we can really help you grow. Does that sound fair? All right. I've already talked for six minutes, so I got to get rolling. So I'm gonna share my screen and show you the presentation here. So bear with me and let me start it up. Okay, everybody should see my presentation now. I'm gonna start the slideshow. You see that okay? I can't see you now, so somebody- yes. ought Okay, thank you. All right, so very first, let's get rolling. What we're gonna to learn today is Facebook strategies. I call it the 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. Um, this is recorded. I could give you all copies of this. I'm going to go fast. So don't worry about trying to write everything down, right? We're going to focus on like five really strong principles in Facebook that if you adopt these into your daily habits, um, my personal team, for instance, uh, we're going to help them use birthday messages strategy through my assistant, Rhea. You're all welcome to use her as well. It's a very inexpensive strategy. I spend probably less than $2 a day to send every single one of my 5,000 friends personal Facebook messages. Very, very powerful when you really embrace it. Um, and then we're going to talk about DMing Facebook friends, building deep relationships, and then add target agent audience daily. This could be buyers and sellers as well, right? This crosses over to your real estate business. And then follow-up systems and Facebook friends lists. A lot of value in that. Do you know that you can make a Facebook list that is buyers and a Facebook list that is sellers, Facebook list that's renters, and you could post something only to that group of people. So you could post on your Facebook. So publicly, it looks like you posted to everybody in the universe, but it actually Facebook only sent it to that list. So then you could say, hey, I just found out some great information about interest rates today. They went down to 5.05%. If you happen to be a buyer out there in my vast Facebook universe, reach out to me, send me a DM and I'll tell you about the system. And then you could send that to only 10 people in your whole Facebook or 20 or 50 or however many buyers that you're working with. So very, very powerful to target your audience and, and using these lists. And then, and then bonus, we're going to talk about open houses and how you can actually really increase your um, Facebook posting presence by going to open houses on the weekends, other people open houses, and doing virtual walkthroughs and different things, okay? So we're going to go pretty quick, but
but I'm gonna leave time to answer questions at the end of this. So strategy, if you just write this down, 105321, what that stands for is this. Um, Facebook, 10 messages and likes and comments a day. So it's really three separate things. Number one is 10 likes a day. You wanna go on to Facebook. You can do it in the early morning, late afternoon when you're done working. It doesn't matter as long as it's in that calendar day. Think of it that way. And you wanna like 10 people's posts. If they posted they were at the lake for the weekend or if they posted they were at grandson's had a birthday, whatever it is, you wanna like it and comment on that particular post of theirs. The, the thought behind this is it, it shoots them with dopamine. Dopamine is the feel good thing. If you get a compliment, somebody says, wow, that outfit's rocking. You feel amazing about that because it's given you a shot of dopamine. Facebook does the same thing. These algorithms are all designed to keep you in that dopamine um, uh, sector, right? Meaning that if you post something on Facebook about a great houseboat trip you did this weekend on Lake Shasta, you're posting that so people will acknowledge you. You're posting that so people can see what you're doing and they could love on you and say, oh, how cool. But many of us just like it. And then, and then we look at that as like, if I got 80 likes that, you know, that was a valuable thing. More importantly is to like it and then comment on it and say something that is a, a thought provoking kind of question like, hey, Lake Shasta, how's the water level question mark? That's gonna create them reciprocally responding to that and then everybody sees the conversation. So it's got multiple effects to it, okay? And then 10 messages a day is a, is a real nice structure to just stay in connection with your Facebook group. And you could do all this in about 15 minutes a day very easily. I do it, okay? The second thing is five posts per week. You wanna be consistent with Facebook, Instagram, and even TikTok now is TikTok's the number one platform on the planet. Fast, it happened quickly. And Facebook that owns Instagram and Google that owns YouTube, they're all trying to get in front of this kind of um, TikTok phenomenon. But what it is, is you are um, posting five times per week. What that structure looks like is this. Three business posts per week. Okay, so it could be an open house. It could be um, a neighborhood. It could be a, an interview that you're promoting your business with but some kind of three business posts per week. This is on your personal page, by the way. If you have a business page, you could do the same exact procedure on both. So you're just sharing it over to your business page or you could put on your business page and share it. But usually you can't share from your business page to your personal page. It just Facebook doesn't allow it, but you can go from personal to the business share, okay? So three business posts. This is some ideas that I've done uh, I do Tuesday Titans. It's like a digital mare. I've interviewed some amazing people. I leverage them for my content. My business content's not me. It's just me leveraging them uh, in a podcast. You could do that. A lot of different things you could do, right? Interview the mayor, influencers, restaurant owners, whatever it may be. Um, and then two personal posts per week. This is equally as important because if you're just all biz, 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 people will start deleting you. We all know that lender or agent that does nothing but posts every time they have a closing and nothing else. We're not building a relationship. They're showing off, right? So we don't want to show off. We want to create that intimate, you know, inner side of it. The more intimate you are, meaning that vulnerability and, um, hey, you know, we just rescued this dog, or I really love donating and doing things at the homeless shelter, or simple as saying, hey, I'm out in the mountains today, taking a day off for for my sake and, and my girlfriend and I are just enjoying the lake, right? All that has equal power when we're looking at the social media side of, um, of Facebook. And then one live Facebook post per week, this is critical. You could do it personal business. It doesn't matter as long as you do it because it's the algorithm that is really helping you with this Facebook strategy. The algorithm for a Facebook live is 10X over any other posting you could do because they've realized that that's where the, the amount of um, interaction comes from is from being live. If you notice, you get a pop-up on your phone when you go live as well, when, some, when somebody else goes live. Randy Bird just went live. So it's, a, it's an accelerated um, content that Facebook's pushing in front of you. And this is a big deal. Just some ideas, market updates, open houses on the weekends, like I said, it's a great Facebook live. Hey, I'm in uh, Jill's house here. Hey, Jill, say hi to everybody. 
Jill's with Better Homes and Gardens. Anyway, this is a beautiful home over on Silver Street. It's 1867 square foot. Uh, Jill, do you want to say a couple things about your open house? You're promoting them. They got a shot of dopamine. You tag them on Facebook. They get, uh, their friends are seeing that. But ultimately, you're getting the same traction without having an open house, without all the other stuff, right? So it could be powerful. Uh, video tours, interviews, farm, uh, your farm, geographical farm, that is a sphere of influence. All that stuff is valuable when you look at this, okay? Um, birthday strategy, it's my favorite thing. I'm going to show you some birthday messages real quick here. But again, if you want this presentation, just ask. We'll get it over to you. But um, the birthday strategy, everybody loves their birthday, period, end of story. It doesn't matter. If it's your birthday and somebody loves you on your birthday, they're going to love you back. It may take a couple of days to answer hundreds of them, but I've been doing this for three years now, and it's incredible how people haven't responded for a couple of years, and then now they're, um, you know, they're saying so much for always caring about me on my birthday. It's really, it's really pretty special. Okay, so here's a sample, and again, I'm I'm going to go fast so we don't have the time to look at everything. And if you're not muted, mute yourself just uh, so you don't have any background noise. But this is a guy that in 2021, I said, happy birthday. And he said, thank you, sir. Cheers from one rock star to another, right? Because I said, party like a rock star. And then nothing else was said until the following, you know, well, we said a couple of things about golf and all that stuff. And then Sunday of last week, when is his birthday? 724. So 724 of 22, which was last Sunday, I said again, happy birthday, Tyler. I hope this finds you well. Not today, LOL, but let's connect soon. Wishing you an amazing birthday. I'll give you guys these scripts and this recording so you could use whatever, copy everything. But he responded, thank you, sir. Totally love these last few birthdays that you took the time to send me a message. Very much appreciated. Is he not feeling the love and did he not get shoot with, shot with dopamine, right? It's that feel good drug that makes him feel good about our relationship. And then I said, you bet, buddy. I try not to forget. Thanks for acknowledging. Enjoy, bro. I didn't send that message. Rhea, my VA in India, sent the message of happy birthday. I only took it over once he responded. And that's all I do every day is respond to the ones that respond back. Okay. So here's another one. This is a gal I don't know. I said, happy birthday. Um, and she's in Sublimity, Oregon. My goal with this is agent attraction, right? I want to build a relationship with her. She's one of my Facebook friends. She said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mistakenly said, you're very welcome, cheers. And then she said, thank you, thank you again. And I said the exact same thing because I didn't, I was re responding to probably 20. So I didn't notice I said it twice. But then the next day, you see how it was Saturday was her birthday last week. The next day, or I tell Rhea to wait at least two days to send a message. So Rhea said, hey, Sandy, what's up, friend? Let's jump on a short call soon and catch up. What day works for you? Question mark. Well, this is two days after I loved on her and shot her with dopamine and Facebook on her birthday. And she said, sounds good to me. Anytime during the week is usually pretty good. I just started building a relationship. Now I have permission to reach out to her, right? This works exactly the same way for buyers and sellers, right? This is the value in this is it really is an opportunity. And here's her Facebook profile just, profile just to show you she's a real person. She's at Berkshire Hathaway. We've never met, but I will call her now and build a conversation based around me loving on her for a couple of years on her birthday. Okay. Um, there's another birthday one. I'm not going to read every word of it, but you could see what she wrote, what he wrote at the bottom. Randy, thank you so much for your special message. It means so much to me. Think about those words. It means so much to me. Most people are just liking or posting a cake or doing something. I'm actually going to the effort of writing them a message and then responding to them. Now, here's a little secret. If they're close friends of yours or if they're buyers and sellers, rather than typing a message, hit the video button and send them a video response. So the VA says, happy birthday. They say, thank you so much. It means the world to me. I'll go to my phone. I'll click the, uh, the DM. I'll click the camera and I'll record up to a 15 second video that just says, absolutely, Jerry, it's, you're way too important for just a text. Thought I'd shoot a quick video. Have a great birthday, man. Let's connect next week. Talk to you later, right? Super powerful. Trust me on this. This is really, really a game changer if you, if you have some discipline around it. And this is something you all have available for free. If you're already on Facebook. You have thousands of friends. This is a way to really build it and nurture it. So DMs for lasting friendships. 
this is, you know, this is where the rubber hits the road. Liking and commenting on their posts are one thing, but DMing takes it to a personal level. And then the goal is to get on a phone call, right? At the end of the day, buyers and sellers or even agents, the goal is to have a conversation with them to really start building. Um, oh, I just, I see Glenn. I work with Sandy. She's a super sweet lady. I love that. And so now I get to expand my network. And now that I know she knows you, guess what I get to say? Hey, Sandy, we have mutual friends. Matter of fact, you know, Glenn, he's a business partner of mine. I love the guy, right? I get to edify you. It, it, it's just a big opportunity. So DMs for lasting friendships, powerful tool. I'm going to um, show you a video of Jimmy Rex. But what I want to show you is the language in here. What he does is he focuses on contacting about 10 people a day with no agenda. The, the secret behind this is you can't have an agenda or they'll see right through it, right? So he says, try this little life hack. Every day I call a couple of people while you're driving on or to an appointment, on a lunch break, whatever. Don't ask for anything. Don't offer anything. Just call and connect. You'll quickly notice a difference in your friendships. And there was a video to play, but it didn't work. But it's, it's like a two-minute video of him talking about this. But I want that to sink in with you. How do you keep so many friends close in your life? This guy has thousands of friends that he says that are in his like close proximity to his friendship. And he has hundreds of thousands of followers, right? He's got uh, views, over 5 million views on a couple of his TikTok videos. But he does it by being purposeful every day and just connecting with 10 people. Remember how I just taught you about Facebook DMing people to connect on purpose every day. What about if you did this and said, hey, I was wondering if we could just connect for two minutes today. Yeah, what's it about? Nothing. And then you get on the call. You don't have an agenda. You don't, you don't ask for anything. You don't offer anything. And you just call to connect and you leave it like that. Don't have the, the connection at the end of it where you go, well, oh, by the way, like Brian Buffini, oh, by the way, if you have anybody who wants to buy or sell, don't do that. This is a relationship building connection. And once you've built enough equity in this friendship, they'll ask. They'll say, hey, I got a house to sell or I got a buddy needs taken care of. Then you can transition away from that phone call, but no, no agenda on this connection call. Same thing with the DMing, right? If you lead with an agenda for yourself, it's going to be obvious. They're already in a protection mode, typically. All right. So um, a couple other uh, just samples that I love these. Look at the reason I'm showing you this one is I said, happy birthday to him in 2021, the very first one. The second one was in 2022. And then he finally said, thank you, sir. So two years, he said, no, thank you. He said nothing. He finally said, thank you, sir. And so I said, you're welcome, bro. Cheers on March 10th. And then March on 11th, the day after, by the way, I make a two-day rule. My, my VA got this one wrong. I went two days after their birthday, right? And then it says, Kevin, we've been friends here for a minute. Let's connect. I have exciting and big things happening in my business world. I'd love to share Connected Network. Are you open to short business call? That's specific around business, right? This is an agent I want to have a business conversation with. If it's a buyer or seller, you could just say you just want to connect or I'd like to add value and, and you know, network. And then he said, hi, Randy. Yes, please, right? So some of you probably got a little nervous about me being forward in the business conversation, but he said, hi, Randy. Yes, please. Give me a call next week. Tuesday or Wednesday works well, right? So we had a call with him and we set up an appointment. And then I said, let's call at 1130 on Tuesday, which I called him while I was in Tahoe and, and had a conversation, right? But I want, to, I want you to just soak in the, the value of this. And then Julia, she's actually on the call with us today. This is a great example. I stayed true with my messages, even though she wasn't responding. She finally responded and we ended up having a relationship and, and moved into EXP together over this relationship we built on Facebook. So Julia, you see that you're a part of my case study here and now a close friend of mine, always been a friend of mine. But now that relationship has allowed me to increase it and add value to the point to where we have now an opportunity to work together. And she's on the call with us today, which is really exciting. Now, follow-up systems for all this. Once you've made a connection, a buyer, a seller, an agent, whatever it may be, right? Um, it doesn't matter what the situation is. You want to put them into some kind of follow-up system. For me, it's a simple hot, warm, cold. Hot is every week, warm every two weeks, cold every month, right? Everybody gets connected with at least once a month, and it could be an automation or otherwise, all right? 
So just real quick, um, seven days, 15 days, 30 days. The fortune really is in the follow-up. And then um, take action. You know, as we leave this, and I'll get into some Q&A, but take action. We're making real estate fun again. Have this be the, the, the theme of your Facebook posts, personal, business. You can still have fun doing real estate, have fun living life, right? I made some posts of me on the golf course at Edgewood in Tahoe, and 20 people commented on my Facebook and DM'd me going, oh, I love Tahoe, or I love this, or you're living your best life. Make sure you're living your best life at least in the, in the eyes of Facebook and social media and, and try to lead with integrity around this. Because if you're, you know, Andrea is very, Andrea is very spiritual. She's a, a very strong Christian that can be her tribe, right? And you might be all about helping children, or you might be about animals. You might be about the environment, whatever it is, be authentic to yourself because your tribe will start following you and tracking with you. Okay. Um, so this is really an opportunity for you to share lots of posts with, with people to see that. And then as I wrap this up, thank you, thank you, thank you. You see my uh, Beam Team shirt on there. Now let's put in the work like a boss. Let's grow this baby. It's your time, Coach Bird, okay? So I'm on share and take any questions or anything that you guys might have from that presentation and you know, this is what I'm passionate about because I've been doing this for years now and we've seen this crush it. We've seen this really, really work. And more importantly, you're building that relationship with people to get to a point to where you've developed enough equity in the relationship that there's trust enough to ask you a question, to, to partner with you, to have you help them to refer you, whatever this is, this is the business entity that we really want to focus on. Okay. So now you could unmute yourself and come up with any Q&A, any questions, any way I could support you in this. Hey, Randy. Julia, how are you? You were the star of the show, by the way. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it has been years. We've been friends for years. We have been so. friends for years. So Julia, do you mind if I'm, I get a little vulnerable with this because I don't have your permission. I want your permission, right? Sure. So Julie and I have been friends for years. I'm friends with her dad for 20 years. I met her dad the first week I was in real estate in Redding, California in 2003. Mike Rosser is a legend in Redding and Julie is daughter of Mike. Julie and I've been friends. Her husband and I are friends. We've, he, he's in a band. He's just a super talented guy. I really admire these guys, but I was messaging her on Facebook and she wasn't responding for a couple of years. Does that mean we're not friends? No. Does it mean that she checks Facebook every day? No, there's a lot of things going on there, right? But yeah. Julia, the, the reason I asked her permission is a couple months ago, she came in and said, I've been watching your social media stuff. You said something recently about price reductions. Remember that when we had a conversation with the seller? Oh, yeah. And she was not in EXP. She was with a different company. And she goes, you know, I really like your content. You've stayed friends with me all these years. Could you help me with the seller? And I said, absolutely. We did a three-way call with the seller right then and there. And I had some dialogue with that seller to try and help Julia. And this wasn't about getting her into EXP. This was about being her friend. And that friendship led to her saying, well, I want to talk to you about EXP. I want to talk to you about some of the things you do. And I was blessed enough to partner with her. And, and now I get to be a, a next level of a friendship and a business partnership as well to help her succeed. And that's ultimately what my avatar is. That's what I want to do, right? I want to help enough people get what they want so I get what I want. And so, um, Julia, I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but does that experience feel organic to you? Did it feel like I was too pressured? Did it feel like we were, you know, I was meeting you where you were, basically. No, I didn't think so at all, because you had always um, kept up and you'd always like message me or just Facebook on Facebook or just text me and said, um, I really like to meet up. I'm coming out to Reading. Let's just have some lunch or something. And it, no, the whole entire thing was very organic and it was great. And that's why ultimately I called you for my seller for the issue that I was having with her bring you down to earth, but you know, sometimes sellers don't want to do that, but <laughs> it yeah. was great. It was a great way to meet and get back together. I mean, we've been friends for years, of course. And, um, 
I'm really excited about switching over to EXP. So I appreciate that, Julie. And I, and I mean this when I say this, and I'm saying it in front of a crowd, but you know, I really adore you as a human being. I watch you too. I've been watching your Facebook. I watch your golf game. I watch your travels to Mexico. You know, that's how we connect. And mm -hmm. we just don't want to hide behind that connection. I want you all to encourage you to build those relationships because Julie and I now are five times the friends that we were before. We were friends. I respected her, but we're going to hang out now. We're going to go to Cabo together. We're going to go we're going to do things together, both in business and in personal life, because she's my circle now, right? She's yep. moved from outside to the inner circle, being part of the team, the organization, the family, the tribe. It's not just about EXP and it's not about your team. It's about friends, right? Glenn's my friend now. I golf with Glenn. I'd love to go on a trip and golf with Glenn. I'd love the fact that we get to do these things together now is really the secret sauce to it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I'm happy Julia. to be a part of it. Yeah, um, absolutely. So any questions? Question. My, oh, yeah. my thing was about the Facebook. And my only question is, you know, I do Facebook a lot. I do IG a lot. And um, I think that the one thing is you have so many people sitting behind a computer with no face of recognition. And they just are such naysayers by everything. And I don't have time to always get on there and like delete the really bad comments from everyone. And I don't know if everyone else has experienced this, but just on my Facebook, I have, you know, probably not as many as you or anyone else, but I have about 1500 people that I go out to and they share it. And then again, a million things yeah. back where I put it on Ready Marketplace. That's right. So great question. And I'm going to be bold in this. I delete often. I delete fast and I delete often. The one intolerance I have or the one non-negotiable is, is BS negativity, right? I just don't do it. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's going to take the time, if, they're a, if their comment is her op an opinion, that's, that's different. But I'm talking about you know downtrodden people, naysayers, negative people, zero tolerance. You don't get two strikes with me. It's a half a strike, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking at my Facebook. Who I, I deleted three people today, and it was because I reached out to say, "Hey, we're friends. Let's let's talk. Let's connect." I don't want nothing to do with the XP. Matter of fact, lose my number. You know. So I'm looking for those as well, but I'm I'm really looking for friendships and people that I'd like to hang around with. Now I have five thousand friends. I've maximized how many friends you could have on Facebook for business, but the reality is I don't have five thousand friends. I got probably four hundred friends. And I'm trying to make more out of the 4,600 to become friends. But to answer your question, I would stay with, with light. I would stay with your, your integrity message. And I would delete quick and delete often and build your tribe around who you are. Because whatever you, whoever you are, whether it doesn't matter if you're into golfing or whatever it is, right? You're going to find a tribe that tracks with you in those ways. But I've attracted positive people. My message says, hey, leave me a positive message. And I get comments three or four times a month going, that's a great message because I was going to complain a little bit, but I couldn't because I said, leave me a positive message, right? Don't leave me, don't leave me a mean one. Maybe so, I need my, my conversation with leave a positive energetic message. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so, so I'm yeah. stating what I want to have happen with them. And I think there's, yeah. I think there's value in, you know, we... We attract what we're putting out energy-wise. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. But um, awesome. I would I would be bold on Facebook. Uh, Kristen and I were just talking. She's doing a hot or not. Could be controversial. She's taking agent listings and saying hot or not, like in her opinion. It could be controversial. So you got to be okay with the outcome of that. You got to be okay with haters. And just delete the haters and keep moving because there are people that will love that message, love the content. And that's your tribe, right? You cannot make everybody happy. You you, you need to look at real estate like this. You're running for mayor. If you're a super successful 51 or 55% of the people love you, that means 45% of the people hate you, right? That may not feel good for a lot of people, but you're looking for your tribe and you're not trying to please everybody. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Rock solid advice, hard to follow sometimes, but it's rock solid. No, that's good advice. Yeah, I was doing my open houses this weekend and just a lot of people are saying, oh my gosh, that price is outrageous. You're insane. And 
you just have to go with the flow. So I, yeah, I you do. And, and also there might be value there. You could sit, you could run a poll on the price and then that, that could be ammunition for the seller to say, Hey, we did the comps comps are historical, but here's the poll that we did. Mm -hmm. One person said we should probably tear it down. One person said it needs a roof. I wouldn't move into that without a paint job, whatever it is, it's still valuable feedback, but people do use the platform as their, their voice. And remember, not everybody is like us on this group call, right? If you're on our team, you're not negative minded. I can promise you that you wouldn't have made it through the, uh, you wouldn't have made the cut. So with that said, there's a lot of people out there that are downtrodden that are circled in a uh, fear and, and uncertainty and stuff. It's our job to be the light and, and the light sometimes to identify the people that we don't want in our circles. Thanks. You bet. Any, any other questions, any tactical questions about Facebook or otherwise, we'll get this recording out to you. It's always on my workplace group after the trainings. It's always in those places, but if you want it, I want you to get it in your fingers and, and you'll get it. Do you have any uh, statistics or um, about how Facebook is pushing reels? Yeah, reels are um, everything that is short video based is the trend, right? So um, they're pushing reels are more important than ever. And then those are now translating to Instagram and um, TikTok now is actually a real thing. You know, I deleted TikTok a year ago because it's very consuming if you don't watch it. And I, I'm guilty of that. I was like, you know, I'm still guilty of it, but I'm using it in a different, in a different place now. I'm really using it to watch real tours that I can have relationships with and building those relationships and then and then pushing them into the other social media platforms and ultimately my database for follow-up once I get a five-minute conversation with them. But yeah, real reels are super popular um, as well. Again, like I said, TikTok is is really here to stay now. And matter of fact, I just read an article where um, uh, Facebook, which owns Instagram and, and YouTube, they're all going to this format to try and combat uh, the success of TikTok. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else before I turn it over? I know I went a little over. Sorry, Furiel. So, Furiel, I don't have, do you want to keep your team call on this call for today or do you want to, okay. No. Yeah, so for today, we're going to transition over to Andrea and Furiel for the BEAM team. I, I suggest Julia and Kristen and other people on my team to pay attention to their team as well. There might be nuggets there, but you're open to leave if you want to. It's their team call now, specific. But um, with that, Furiel, I'm going to turn it over to you and thank you for being here. And let me know if you need me to make you the uh, co-host or anything. I do. Thanks. Okay, cool. I'll do that. Okay, you got it. Okay, perfect. And I'll do the same thing with Andrea. Awesome. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Beamsters. Let me get my slideshow going here. All right. I don't think Cassie's on here, is she? I think she's out of town. I keep trying to welcome her to the team. She's never here. <laughs> Ricky's coming in. I'll let him in. Um, yeah, I don't see Cassie on here, but yeah. she's a very nice gal. Excited to be partnered with her. Yeah, I think she's out of the office. I think she gets back later this week. Yeah. I'm going to 